Hello again, Gary Stearman, and uh, this broadcast being made on the 8th of June for broadcast on the 11th, Monday the 11th of June, in studio with us uh, today again, author Ken Johnson. Ken, welcome back to Prophecy in the News. And Thank you. We uh, are going to kind of continue a discussion that we started on the last update, and it has to do with uh, Ken's view of the Bible. Uh, he has a unique approach to studying the Bible by going to historical sources, validating uh, historical events, historical personages, and bringing those all together to give you a clearer look at Scripture. And by the way, I have to compliment you because the, the work you do is easy to read which can't be said of all history. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> and that's what I, I really think recommends Ken's work uh, to you. If you are at all interested in history but have thought it might be too boring, forget that. I've got a book here, and we're going to look at six books today. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at these books as a package called the Ancient Prophecies Package. This one, Ancient Prophecies Revealed. 500 prophecies listed in the order uh, of when they were fulfilled. And I'm looking through the table of contents and, and just going through all of this. Really an amazing list. 500 prophecies. What are some of these prophecies and, uh, uh, and how, how do we fit them into a timeline? Well, the, uh, the prophecies, I, I took my, my research from the church fathers and basically they would compartmentalize them all into ages. And uh, the, the concept is that prophecy continues to happen, not necessarily new prophets coming along, but all the prophecies out of Isaiah, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. Daniel, continuing to go through. We had uh, the rise of uh, all the nations, uh, including Greece and Babylon and Rome, and then the coming of the Messiah, and then the prophecies about the birth of the, the church and the ex expulsion of the Jews through Micah and many of these other things. And then 53 prophecies have been fulfilled since Israel has come back. Uh, many talking about uh, the, the shepherd wars. There's supposed to be eight wars between mm -hmm. Israel and Syria. Half of those have been fulfilled. Uh, there's just a whole lot of those things. Uh, prophecies. Yeah, and just to give you a little flavor here, I, I just this fell open to page 108, A.D. 2004, the Sanhedrin reestablished. And of course, you have pictures of a couple of rabbis. You have a description. That was a very great historical moment. And yes, it was. And by the way, the fulfillment of prophecy. Right. Yeah, Jesus said to be careful because when the time comes when you see the abomination of desolation that you might not be able to escape because you can't travel, which means the rabbinical laws are back. That only happens when the Sanhedrin's reinstituted. They've been reinstituted now since 2004. The, leg the system of legal interpretation for the Jews mm -hmm. back in place, by the, which fits into the larger picture that Israel would come back to the land, which is, I, I right. think, one of our fundamental beliefs. Right. And that uh, gives you a little sample of what's in this book, Ancient Prophecies Revealed. Uh, let's look at a few more of these six books. Ancient Messianic Festivals. Uh, this gives us a picture of what? We look at the Ancient Messianic Festivals, what do we see? Well, there are seven festivals designed by God to teach prophecy. The rituals themselves show you prophecy. And so the first coming festivals, the spring festivals, talked about in ritual form the death burial, resurrection of the Messiah, and the establishment of the church. The fall festivals teach on the rapture, the what they call the Yamin Noraim, the ancient time, the mm -hmm. uh, days of awe, uh, the tribulation period, the second coming, and the establishment of the messianic kingdom. And so again, it's very important to look at these things, all types of prophecies, all types of things God is doing, patterns that he shows throughout scripture. Very good. And uh, how about the ancient book of Daniel? Everybody knows that Daniel is sort of a a key prophet of the Old Testament. He talks about the 70 weeks. He talks about the seven years. He talks about the Antichrist, uh, the ancient book of Daniel. Tell us about uh, this. Oh, it's amazing because Daniel uh, begins to uh, explain everything. In chapter 11 of Daniel, for instance, it starts with Darius the Mede ruling in Babylon. And it goes through and tells you point by point who takes over, who marries who, what city gets conquered all the way through the Romans and the dispersion of Israel. So in chapter 11, you go from 536 B.C. to 1948 A.D. And then you have the yeah. rise of this other king. And it talks about the establishment of the, 
the Antichrist and even where he's going to put his international headquarters. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand the 11th chapter of Daniel because they think it's obscure and they don't have any key to understand the historical source material, but, but you've provided that key and made it easy. So yes. I, I think it's, that alone makes this book worthwhile. Uh, and again, we're just going to just go right through these six books, the ancient epistles of John and Jude, the subtitle, The Apostles versus the Gnostics. And in this corner, it's the Gnostics. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the big battle? The Apostles versus the Gnostics. Oh, the Gnostics wanted to mix paganism with Judaism and Christianity and create their own kind of basically cults. They're the cults of the first century. Uh -huh. uh, the Church Fathers talk about the Epistle of Jude was written specifically against the Carpocratian Gnostics who brought in the idols and had their own particular brand of Gnosticism. But it shows where sorcery would come in and replace prayer and these type of things in the latter days and the warnings from John and Jude about how we have to believe Jesus is the only Messiah, the only way of salvation, basic Christian doctrine, but it's very, very important in our time period. Hmm. And, and to, to put it in this particular way, you know, is kind of unique as a perspective. I haven't seen it done before. Uh, John and Jude versus the Gnostics, and yet it's a very valuable study. Uh, the next one we'll look at, the ancient Seder Olam. What does Seder Olam mean? Uh, Order of Eternity. It's a basically a history book. It's a history book. Mm -hmm. The Order of Eternity. And uh, you have here as a subtitle, a Christian translation of the 2,000-year-old scroll. So this is a Jewish scroll. Yeah, it's a history book, much like I tried to do with my history book. A guy back in 169 A.D. Uh, wrote the book showing the, the chronology of everything. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about it is it shows the Messiah did come, fulfill the prophecies. It shows that uh, Elijah would come before he comes back. It com talks about the Gog-Magog invasion and several other things. Prophecy, history, it's the same thing to a Jewish mind. Wow. And it's amazing. But later on it becomes tampered with. And there's a rabbi named Yoshi that messed a lot of things up. And the, the Talmud actually misquotes it and says the Messiah didn't come. But if you actually pick it up and read it, you see the up opposite story. So it's an amazing thing to use to witness to Jews, showing how to use Daniel 9 and to get them to think about and realize the Messiah did come. Well, I think you've, you've kind of gotten a little glimpse of Ken by now, because what he does is look into some corners where the rest of us just don't look, uh, either because we don't have the... Uh, uh, equipment in terms of references or background or we think oh man that's boring I don't think I have enough time to look back in that particular dusty old corner but you've looked in some dusty old corners you've brought things out for people to read and it's good easy reading I like it good let's go to one last book here my favorite subject the rapture and this one is a is a nice sky blue color as opposed to brown, and I think that's a, an appropriate color for the rapture. Mm -hmm. uh, the rapture. Uh, everybody knows about the rapture. A lot of people argue about the rapture. What would you like to say about the rapture? What does this book say? It's been a consistent teaching. You see it all through the Old Testament. The rabbis called it the Natsal, the catching away. Paul called it the, the, the catching away. Um, it's very clearly taught when it occurs, pre-trib rapture. Uh, there's many church fathers from the first to second century that were pre-tribulational raptures. Um, it, it's just an amazing thing to me because I keep running into people that are just not sure. And when you look at all the prophecies about the, the coming of the Antichrist, you find out that the rapture occurs when he's revealed. He's revealed when he makes the seven-year covenant, and that's very clearly explained. For instance, right after that, the Nile River is destroyed. So, I mean, it'll be very obvious to everybody when it occurs. So there's really no debate on the rapture. And once again, Ken puts things in a very systematic way. You can look at it, you can study it, you can add it to your own body of knowledge, uh, compare it with scripture. It'll lead you back to the Bible. This is what I like about Ken's work. Again, we're offering these six books, uh, and the thing about Ken's work is that it'll take you towards scripture, not away from it and it, it will augment your study of, of Scripture. These six books we're calling the Ancient Prophecies Package. You can see the books on your screen right now. Uh, when you call the 800 number, ask for the Ancient Prophecies Package, yours for $69.95 plus shipping and handling. And uh, 
That would be a $78 value if you purchased the six books separately at $12.95 each. We think it's a good offer and the material is good. Again, I want to say it one more time and I, I'm, I may be guilty of over-repeating myself, but Ken's work is readable. This is the thing that recommends it. It's not boring and, it, and you'll be led along into some areas that I think will be exciting for you. Ken, uh, keep up the good work. Uh, when you write your next book, come back and talk to us again. Yeah, I'll do that. Do, can we have a preview of what you're working on now? <laughs> or is uh, that top secret? Oh, the next book will be How to Witness to Cults. Basically wow. by using the concept of the Trinity. Very good. We need to talk to you again. Dr. Ken Johnson, researcher par excellence. And it's uh, been our pleasure to bring him to you today. Gary Stearman. Hey, keep looking up, everybody. Bye.